Hey there. Probably here to learn about the biggest dinosaur, right? The biggest of all time. As of 2019, I am going to give you that answer quite shortly. But first, welcome to my channel, Zachosaurus. I am Zach and I'm a science educator. Today, we're going to see what dinosaur truly was the biggest in a short list of the possible contenders for the biggest dinosaur of all time. Well, hey, guess what folks, in 2019, the biggest dinosaur of all time, well, is actually the common ostrich at 100 kilos. <laughs> gotcha there. Yeah, actually, I know it's kind of a boring answer, but the truth is dinosaurs, well, I mean birds, they are dinosaurs, so that's kind of true, right? But I know what you want, right? We want the biggest dinosaur of all time, so let's see that, shall we? Okay, so in case you weren't born on Earth or anything, like, you know, dinosaurs were among the biggest land vertebrates to ever evolve. But the thing is, they were not all giants. If you look into one of our favorites, like T-Rex, Triceratops, and Stegosaurus, they were actually all smaller than the biggest land mammal we thought evolved, Paleoloxodon nematicus, a type of straight tusk elephant that could reach a hefty 23 tons in, like, the biggest individual. So that is really, really, really big. But if you want to look into something that is titanic, you got to look into the sauropods, which would be the group of dinosaurs that included the Diplodocus, the Apatosaurus, and all of the long necks. Our very first contender for world's biggest dinosaur would have to be Giraffe Titan. And although he is only, you know, 25 to 35 tons, this Brachiosaur is actually the biggest dinosaur that we actually know from a completely reconstructed specimen. Therefore, that means that we actually have a pretty good idea what he looks like. And you will see that starkly contrast with the bigger dinosaur that we will see until we reach the world's biggest dinosaur. Next up, the aptly named Dreadnoughtus really shook the scene when it was discovered in 2014 and it was placed actually at 59 tons which is really big. Now there's the problem, it is actually when you look at the skeleton not much bigger than Giraffe Titan which we remember is about half the size. Why is that? Well here's the thing, uh, the first publication that describes uh, the Dreadnoughtus used the cross section of the humerus and femurs, the long bone, to estimate how much weight they could bear, therefore predicting a weight. But there's the thing, I mean the discrepancies are between 30 tons and more than 100. So you can understand that this method is not very valid today to estimate the size of really big animals. Instead, and what I find funny is that it's about a year later, another team of paleontologists actually went over and, well, they tried to see how heavy this actually, uh, animal actually was. And that's what they discovered. We're using a volumetric technique, basically taking the skeleton of the animal, wrapping some meat around it realistically, and weighed all the thing down, they arrived at a size of, well, as you could predict, about the same as Giraffe Titan, therefore between 25 and 30 tons. Uh, so unfortunately for Dreadnoughtus, it is not the giant we thought it was, and it is quite a dreadful outcome when you think about it. Another dinosaur that was more recently estimated for its weight is Supersaurus. And you've probably heard of him because he was once thought to be the longest dinosaur ever at about 50 meters and therefore very, very heavy too. But actually the modern estimates put him at about 35 to 40 tons, which is in comparison about three times heavier than the Plodocus, which he actually is very, very closely related. I gotta say though, few dinosaurs fell from grace as much as the mythical Amphicoleus. Actually this animal, for those who don't know, is basically a vertebrae found in 1878 by an assistant of the very famous paleontologist Edward C. Cope. And here's the thing, he was described as a Diplodocus, or therefore the Diplodocus family, and estimated at 122 tons. This was absolutely huge. But once again, it's only a vertebrae, and actually the physical vertebrae is now gone. So all we got left is a drawing of the vertebrae. Now, in 2018, a reevaluation has been made of the animal, and they realized that Diplodocus is probably not what he is really close to, but he actually belongs to a, well, re weird group of sauropods called the Rebachisaurids, which is, I don't know, they have really tall spines. So the proportions are, we're all wrong for Diplodocus. And he's now downsized for about 60 meters to 30 meters. And because of his build, quite a bit lighter than Supersaurus even. So yeah, from 122 tons to less than 30, talk about a, you know, kick in the mouth. Now, actually, not everything is lost for Amphicoleus. Uh, because it changed family, it has been renamed to Marapunisaurus, and being a very, very early Rubachisaurid actually now explains a lot about the evolution of later sauropod groups. So, good for you, uh, Marapunisaurus. Hold on, folks, we're almost there. Just want to make a quick shout out to Sora Poseidon for not being the biggest dinosaur of all time. I know it has been often mentioned, 
But it's not at all. It actually never really was. The, in the original article describing the animal, the otter clearly states very hefty, but not the chunkiest. After this point, after all the animals we'd seen, honestly, folks, it gets so blurry. I mean, it's basically an isolated bone there, an isolated bone here, a new genus described, always belonging to the same titanosaur. So, titanosaur is a very, very successful group of sauropods to appear later in the history of dinosaur and are characterized by a very broad body and actually quite a wider stance than the Diplodocus, which are another really big family. And they all seem to come from the same South American region of Patagonia. So basically it goes like this, you know, they haven't discovered Nauticolosis, Spatagotitan, Paralatitan, and honestly, such an other vast array of big sauropods. But it seems that even though they always find one a couple of years, each couple of years, none has really, you know, surpassed the original, the biggest dinosaur of all time, the humbly named lizard from Argentina, Argentinosaurus. So just to put you in context of what that would look like, Argentinosaurus was 73 tons. That is confirmed, that is very realistic, and just to give you an image of how big that actually is, that is heavier than some elephant herds. I mean, just imagine that, how much it must have eaten, it must have been crazy. So here's my confirmed answer for you folks. As of 2019, Argentinosaurus is the biggest dinosaur we've ever found. Now, will we find more uh, bigger dinosaurs in the future? Of course we will. I mean, we probably already found them, but we maybe found a smaller specimen of a bigger species, right? You know, the average elephant is like two to three tons, but the biggest ever shot was about 10 tons. So, you know, we'll never know. And there's another thing too, the fossil record is a... It's just that most animals don't fossilize, and that's just the way it is. Now, why did they grow to such huge size, these animals? Well, I don't know. Perhaps it's the subject of a next video or something. Who really knows, right? And with all of this out of the way, thank you very much for watching, everybody, which I hope at this point is more than just my mom and dad. And if you did enjoy the video, uh, just like it. Leave a comment, and if you want more content like that, well, simply subscribe. I should post more stuff in the following weeks, so yeah, stay tuned. And on that, peace.